Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forged Alliance Forever. Today I have a 3v3 ladder match on the Decroxys map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our players starting with team one up here in the northeast and ending with team two down here in the south. Let's start with the Stitch Blue player of Fulgum going first land as a Cybran. To his northwest we have Superintendent. He is going first land in Royal Blue as a... Aeon. And last but not least for Team 1, we have Willow Wisp going first land in the air slot in Amethyst Purple as a Seraphim. So again, on Team 1 side of things, we have a Aeon, a Cybran, and a Seraphim. So no UEF tech for Team 1 or the Blue Team or the North Team, whatever you prefer. Down here in the South, starting with the player of Nabberwaster going first land as an Aeon in orange, the color orange. To his northeast, we have another Aeon of Bajorn going first land in Chevy Crimson. And last but not least, for Team Dew down in the south, we have Stone Brain going first land as a Cybran in Ruby Red. So on Team Two side of things, we have two Aeon and a Cybran. No UEF or no Seraphim Tech for them. Let's go ahead and look at the reclaim for the map here. We have barely under a thousand at 975 hardly anything for our players to scoop up here we have these little small islands that aren't really going to amount or peninsula landmass thingamajigs that aren't going to really amount to a whole lot there's no extractors on those locations we have a ton of extractors actually between our players teams you can see a huge section of the middle I'm just dotted with a bunch of extractors. So we're going to see a lot of land play. We might see some naval plays out here. If, let's see, the Seraphim player up here to the north of willow -Wisk could build some of those T2 cruisers and start shelling the enemy position, the other team's positions down here in the south. But that's really about it. I never really see Navy being super effective. And we have a decent size cliff here. Uh, they'll block a decent amount of shots. The only thing that would be really effective is taking the side that the players are closest to. So Team 2 might take the south uh, water, and Team 1 might take the north uh, water just to ensure that they can do some damage to that main base. Comms are leaving their bases here. All three players on Team 1 and all three players on Team 2 are on the move. Those look like, however, Neverwiser is a little bit slower on the... Uh, the move there, so he's going to get there a little bit uh, later than his compatriots and his mirror here in the south of Will-O-Wisp. So let's go ahead and look at uh, rankings here. We have an even 12.93 average for both teams. We have the highest and lowest rated players in the game on the same team of Team 1, Will-O-Wisp at 18.33 and Superintendent at 8.70. And again, the average being on Team 2 side of things. And then actually the second lowest in the game at as Fulgum going at 11.76. As our players get on the things, let's go ahead and see what's going on. See, we got the Com of Bjorn just making some mass extractors here. And we also have a Stone Brain ensuring that he protects his four mechs expansion. Noel also getting a radar. Very good of him to do that, making sure that there's no possible runbys. And we also have plans to build naval factories here on the northern side. So it looks like Team 1 going to get into that game here pretty soon. Don't see any similar builds here, so maybe that will give them advantage here if Team 1 doesn't do much about that. We have, again, the spreading influence of both teams. It does look like Team 2 is building more of the mass extractors than Team 1. Which is interesting because Team 1 was on the move a little bit faster than Team 2. But, I mean, I guess it's kind of a little different how they layered, not layered, but they constructed the uh, split down the middle. It's kind of weird because it looks like it splits, you know, top left to, well, no, it's not top left to bottom right. Because that would, that doesn't make sense. I mean, that could make sense. I don't know. Just one of those really weird maps where it's hard to figure out the like where the map makers cut it in half and then mirrored it to the other side. We don't have any huge engagements. We are at the five minute mark now. So we should be seeing some upgrades here. Yep, we have the sensor package going on for superintendent. Gonna be able to see a lot further out than he normally would be able to. 
and we'll see the normal size the radar i think is the red no yeah the red and then the attack range is the oh, sorry the regular like crimson red and then the attack range is the re like regular ruby red i guess is what we would call that and then of course his build limit range is the yellow so once he upgrades we'll see the difference in that actually he's at 60 percent We'll wait a couple seconds and make sure there's nothing else going on, and we'll just click onto him and ensure that we can you can actually see that. We have a drop out here with a couple of NGs in these uh, chariots. Going to drop for these mechs up here to the northeast, trying to block out his opponent of getting extra mechs. T2 going on the way for Stonebrain, ensuring he's going to start turtling up. There's no uh, UEF, so no Ravagers or any of that sort of thing. For either team, but we are at 90%. That is the current range of his uh, sensor package. So let's see what he gets when he upgrades. And that is a huge difference. Wow, look at that. That is very effective. He's essentially what a T1 mobile uh, radar station. Let's see what's the the range on the T1. Yeah, oh. Uh, all, yeah, almost the T1. That's a lot. And that's full vision, too. That's not just, uh, just a radar signature. That is vision with a wisp. I don't know what the large yellow ring is. That's weird. But, uh, sorry, that was superintendent, not with a wisp. Yeah, so look at that. That is all vision. So he can see everything. That is a huge amount of vision. Dang. Let's go ahead and look up going here. But it looks like Team 1 starting to form sorry team two excuse me starting to form a center line here a battle line they're you know, obviously building some auto guns t1pd as well as more t1pd from bjorn how are those uh, naval factories going well, we have one built here a second one being built as we speak here for stone brain in the east pond we have one constructed here for i think that is superintendent no that is full gums that is full gums naval factory but we also have another naval factory here for Bjorn so it looks like the team one north uh water might just be uncontested here for team two and that'll build that'll allow them a lot of influence here on this northwestern edge they can also build some of those uh, salems and walk onto the land here because that is a little bit of a hill so they can make it up that from what it looks like gun going down here for nabawasser Showing he can be aggressive with his comm. We only really see two armies being built here for Team 1. Also here for Team 2, very similar thing. We just have two players focusing the, uh, you know, fire base construction and forward production bases. And we have two comms, the air players. We are seeing one being built by Willow. But we have Nambo Answer building his gun upgrade. Of course, he's going to go for the range and then go for the speed here. I would assume speed. Now underway for Bjorn, so they're building opposite upgrades. Kind of an interesting strategy. I don't know if it really matters which one you build first. I mean, if you only can build one, I would assume. That just depends. It's like, are you are you going to be a little more aggressive with it and do the speed? Or are you going to be a little more conservative with it and build the range? That's kind of the toss-up here. Of course, we have some NGs supporting Bjorn, so he can upgrade his comm quicker. And, of course, you know, Neverwise are building the... Uh, Dual upgrade there for the speed. We have some PD creep going down in the middle, kind of along the you know horizontal axis here, along the x-axis specifically. Bring it back to uh, some math. Is it algebra? It's algebra, yeah. That's when you start learning about the x and y axis, I think. Oh, it's been a while since I've been in middle school and high school. But looks like the comm of Will-O-Wisp is going to start moving forward. Of course, he's not really swayed by the incoming fire. From those PD, but the second one, yep, yeah, that might do something. He's gonna fall back. There are more PD here to the west. There is a little bit of a pocket here, so some of these units might make it past. But unfortunately, for superintendent, tries to build a PD and cannot do so. He is in well in range of those Cerberuses. And what's interesting is I think he can actually see those. Yeah, he can actually see those. So he's fully aware of what's going on down there, though with that sensor package on board that commander down here in the south pond we have the comm of fulgrim moving into the water going around this little plateau area 
Those units that Neverwester built earlier on were knocked down, as told, as you can see by the Aeon like landmark placement building uh, template thingamajig. We have Fulgum going in the water, being shot at by some torpedoes. So he will know about that. And he's upgrading to T2, and that uh, that might be a mistake. I'm going to take out some NGs, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, they are in the water, I guess. Look at that. It looks like they're not because their wheels turn, but they are in the water, so it's a little weird there. But they, this uh, attack sub, this life, will probably take out this factory. It, it's building kind of slowly. Of course, the Cybran uh, structures repair themselves automatically, so that's why it's repping some hit points per second. It's not a whole lot. But it does make a difference. It will last a little longer. But I don't think that's going to finish, unfortunately. They're going to build a T1 torpedo launcher further back and then build a second factory. Unfortunately, it's going to make pathfinding a little bit hard in this little channel area. So we'll see how that works for him. But that'll be a later issue. He should just cancel the upgrade and uh, save the mass. Where is this attack sub going? Oh, he's actually going for the torpedo launcher. Probably not a good idea to get close to that. It gets launched out. Oh, and he's going to fall and sink into the ocean, unfortunately, for him. And these two assisting units won't be a whole lot to fend off against that, unfortunately, for them. So this push out here from Bajoran won't really matter a whole lot. He should have just stuck with taking out the factory first and then gone for the uh, torpedo launchers afterwards. Definitely a mistake there. Team 2 have pushed the middle of the map just by a little bit you can see the pd creep starting to make an effect here in the land game fulgrim is kind of stuck over here in this corner we also have <laughs> we have a point defense up here i wonder if that point defense no well if the cyber commander gets closer he will be able to be in range well, not in range but um have a line of sight you can tell the calm trying to take out that uh, those ngs there but cannot do so because of that nearby you know cliff that he can't shoot over it's definitely going to hurt. And now the Oblivion turret will open up and target the Calm of Fulgum, pushing back Team 1 even further. We have some TMLs here. Uh, actually, TMD and TMLs here in the middle here for Superintendent. Going to take out some of those uh, Cerberus turrets. Going to target the next one, looks like. And there it goes. And there it went. So no TMD here. There is one over here to the west, but of course that doesn't matter if the... TMD can't even, it's not even in range, the, the missile's not even in range. We have Stonebrain being assaulted here. We have some blazes kind of taking out the nearby TMD, and then the missiles are going to launch. Going to go after the, what's going after now? It looks like going after the comm of Navarwasser, but nope, goes after the PD. So taking out uh, primary defenses here on that, uh, that central line here for Team 2. Of course, we have Superintendent with his vision. You can see a decent amount of that. They know where the comm is. Well, this they knew, and then it disappeared. Not permanent. Uh, doesn't say no ones, but not a permanent mark on the map. You think if you have Omni, I think it'll keep the the mark of the comm. Um, maybe it just has to be in radar range, maybe. But I, th I think it's Omni. You can keep the, the icons there. Unless they go under a stealth field, then I think... You can block it, but we have counter missiles going after the mexes of Team 1. That will drop Team 1's eco down a little bit. That is, of course, 6 mass a second. Not a huge amount, but a couple missiles will uh, take out a lot of mass fairly quickly. We have blazes and T1 assisting units taking out this firebase here. We have some of these asylum shield generators being able to shield these NGs and a couple of obsidians. The T2.5 units, very effective, very tanky. Now we have another missile inbound going for the T... Not TML, cause, and there's no TMD. It's just taking out all of the uh, Cerberus turrets. Stonebrain should rebuild another... Yep, there it goes. I was gonna say, he should be rebuilding those TMD. We now have a mobile missile launcher here on this eastern cliff. Start taking out those blazes and other units down there in the, uh, the main valley. Not even a valley, just main... Center Isle, I guess. I don't even know what you would call that. Just landmass? I don't know. But we have one frigate over here. Just kind of holding position. Been battered, but it's still fine. T2 has been completed for Fulgum. And T2 has been completed for Bajoran. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some Salem's or 
Actually, those aren't Salem's. Those would be oh, Trident's? Oh, are those? The, those are the Frigates, right? No, those are the Beacon. Maybe they are Trident's. Mm. Oh, when the unit gets built, I will remember the name. And T2 has been completed for the Ruby Red player of Stone Brain. So he's going to start building some cruisers first. Wait. Nope. No, those are cruisers. Yep. Those are cruisers. Yeah, you can see the TML on their uh, structures there. You can see it on the back. The reuse of assets by the developers was a very smart move. Less things to code and design. T3 Air has been achieved for Will O Wisp. It has been for a couple of minutes. And of course, T3 has been achieved for his opponent here in the south of Nabawasser. It looks like Willow is a little bit ahead in terms of the uh, air grid, so he'll be able to produce more ASF quickly. And we also have a strap bomber, and what is that going to go after? Well, going to go after maybe some frigates? Nope, going to bypass those. They, it does get spotted, so definitely kind of a uh, kind of a misplay there, showing his hand a little bit. ASF moving, the strap bomber drops its payload. Hits the calm of Stone Brain, takes out some defenses, but doesn't really matter. Tried to couple that with a incoming missile. Very good move, trying to like combine both of those, but it really wasn't going to matter there. And now it looks like Stone Brain is going to retreat. Team 1 will gain the ground here in the middle, at least on this western side. And it looks like even here we have a lot of mechs being taken out here for Team 1. And in terms of eco, we have 339. Still, even with the loss of those four mechs and the other one over here, they are still in the lead by about 10 to 15 mass uh, over their opponents of Team 2. And in terms of total eco accrued or total mass accrued, we have about a 4 to 5k advantage, maybe about 3 to 4. So it's not a huge uh, deficit here for Team 2. They can come back fairly easy, not a huge problem on that side. Multiple T2 radars have been established here for Team 2, making sure they know exactly what's going on. You can see the range on that. Yeah, it's just they have to be, once they are seen, if they go under stealth, they'll be lost. But as long as the radar signature is still there, they'll know where the comms are. So definitely not a good thing to do. That's why you need to take out radar, because once you're spotted, you're spotted until, you again, you go under stealth or you go out of range. Of course, the secondary one of Bijon will allow them to see even more of Team 1's forces. And they can tell there's going to be a huge army over here to the north. And they're going to have to deal with that here right and quick. We have some sniper bots, though. From Actually, we have, yeah, sniper bots here. The little, the little legs. The little legs with that. Kind of like a uh, harpoon gun is kind of what that looks like on that uh, sniper bot. But they'll be able to deal long range damage. They are super weak, but you can see the range. Decent amount. I don't think they outrange T2 artillery, though. So I'm going to have to keep those back, worrying about it. But on this western side, just... All of the missiles being launched by this uh, TML, it's had a two-star veterancy, so it, you know it's prayed for itself, if not more than that. And there is a you know a tactical missile defense right here, but unfortunately, it's not really going to do a whole lot. There is one back over here to the west protecting these mexes, and that's probably the most important thing is protecting the mexes. Team Team needs as much eco as they can get, considering they are behind. And now they're behind 20 mass. Oh, oh, it's starting to jump, I think, as a reclaim and whatnot. So, But 20 mass, not really a huge amount. Are they going to go after the comm again? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yep, they're going to go after the comm. Oh, they're going after this mass extractor. But it is shielded by multiple zappers, unfortunately, for it. Team 1. They're going to target the comm again. Or are they going for another max? I think they're going oh, it's hard to tell with this missile. Did they lead the target? No, it's... Still going back. Where is it? Oh, it's going for the the T1 Naval Factory. Uh, not really going to do... Oh, it does take it out in one hit. Oh, I thought it was two hits with the missiles. Hmm. That's the T2. Anyway, in the north here for Team 1, what we got going on? T3 land has been achieved. T2 has been achieved, of course, for a while for Fulgum. He should be going T3 here pretty soon. Everybody should be in the land game, or at least, you know, a little bit. We do have multiple T2 radar systems, and the T2 radar system for Willow Wisp is upgrading to T3. I do like the backup of the you know the secondary radar system, just like Team 2 has, except I wish uh, Team 1 had put it on the other side, so you get kind of a, a larger area. Just grouping it together doesn't really do a whole lot. Because once this is the T3, you'll see 
that it completely engulfs the range of this T2 one that it's neighboring. So there's the T3. That's the range of the the radar, and it's pretty much that is the Omni. I think yeah, that's the Omni, and it sees everything on the map. So you can see all the radar signatures versus the radar area from Superintendent, which is, oh, which is of course just this. So not really, <laughs> not really gonna see a whole lot more because <laughs> uh, the other radar pretty much does the entire map. But again, backups are good. Shield going on the way for Superintendent. We are at the 20 minute mark. No one has died. There haven't been a huge amount of plays as of yet. We would have had that early denial in the Navy to the east had uh, Bijou not messed that up, in my opinion. We'd have gone for the uh, factory first and then. But we do have a couple of cruisers landing the coastline over here to the west, starting to try to lock out air on this western side. It's a good move. And we see a huge army on here to the west here for superintendent he's trying to hide on this little cliffside here to avoid the incoming fire from the Cerberus turrets we would have more Cerberus turrets being built all the time and of course more missile launchers they are the mobile version so they uh, can be moved and kind of direct their incoming missiles but unfortunately it doesn't look like the coverage is enough to halt the spread of those missiles and it looks like it's going to force Stone brain, at least going in circles a little bit. Should build a couple more, I feel like. The zappers aren't fast enough is the issue. The mobile missile launchers, of course, are not as strong, but the rate at which they fire is, of course, faster, so they're able to, you know, inflict more damage over time. And it doesn't cost mass to build. You just build the unit, and then it just constantly generates those missile launchers, oh, uh, missiles from the missile launchers. You can just tell, see, they're taking out server turns left and right. We have reinforcement units here from Bjorn. He's going to move in to this west to help support this. He should see, yep, we're going to see a couple of shields as well. And unfortunately, it doesn't really look like this is going to amount to a whole lot. There are a couple sniper bots, but they are super weak, and the missiles are raining in all the time. There's not enough TMD to help affect this. This might push back some of the assisting units, but the missile launchers might fall. One of the sniper bots goes down. Yes, this will force them back a little bit, but I, I don't really think that was a win, honestly. That was more of you took units out of place, and this is where Fulgrim should have come in and just charged head forward into that production facility, taking everything out there. We have another TML going after... Wow, this missile's going really wide. Going after a mech. Oh, wow, it's still going. And it... Don't, I don't know where that one was going. It's really weird. We have some T2 artillery. Nope, that is a missile defense. Well, I saw the... Where is it? I saw it. Yeah, that was another TML. But that's a TMD. Hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, it's right here. It was just hiding <laughs> with the symbols. We have a Gunther battery here. It's starting to take out some units on that upper plateau here for Team 2. Trying to force them back. Just engine is sitting on the cliff. Not really a good... Uh, Use of engineers just kind of having them idle. There are some rocks here that they could easily grab, but it doesn't look like a Bajoran is inclined to do so. It's just building more SAM sites and trying to cover this what eastern side as well. Now we're seeing naval armies being built up here for the east and the west, but again, the west has totally been dominated by Team 2. Team 1 gave it up. I well, actually didn't even give it up. Didn't even attempt to uh, try and hold it, so... That could be a fatal mistake, considering there's more and more cruisers landing the coastline and just the m middle section of that ocean all the time. The comm of uh, Bijouin has retreated all the way back from the front line. The only comm on the front line for Team 2 is Stonebrain, and the only comm on the front line for Team 1 is Superintendent. So... I feel like Superintendent should fall back a little bit. This this place, this place uh, placement uh, on the map is pretty good in terms of what he's built. There's mechs nearby and all of that. But, I mean, we're 24 minutes in. A couple gunships, you know, a couple bombers come in, and that could be the end of him. So he's got to be aware of that at all times. That's why a lot of these other players have retreated, at least to further back in the main base, just so they don't get caught out napping. We have, again, more air factories being built. A secondary air factory being built off of the main one. I like the decentralization of that, ensuring that if, you know, critical systems were to go volatile, 
that secondary would not as well. Good on him. Unlike, and well, I was going to say unlike Willow Wisp, but he's doing a very similar thing. He has a secondary grid and a primary grid, ensuring that as long as he has one grid active, he can still produce air units. Of course, if the T3 factory goes down, that's kind of, a headquarters goes down, that's kind of a moot point, but it's um, better than nothing. I wouldn't be surprised to see another one of the players on either team go air at this point, because land is kind of just, eh. And that uh, army that we saw here for the Northwest here for Superintendent has moved to the east and taken out some of those defenses. Didn't really go for it. Looks like they took out the T3 headquarters, but that was really it. Will West built an experimental. I think it was a chicken. Yep, it was a chicken. He has another one building in the back as well. That is the first experimental of the game going for mass fab farms now. Let's see what their eagles are at right now. Well, he's at 450, the highest in the game by almost 100, uh, dwarfing his uh, his compatriots at over two to, almost, I think, three times, depending on the three would be, that would be 51. Yeah, three times the amount of Fulgrim and like two and a half times the amount of Superintendent. We have Neverweiser and Bjorn and then Stonebrain. So Neverweiser not really that far ahead of his uh, compatriots, but still... You can just tell the eco difference in Team 2 because the uh, Team 2 has more of like an average spread. Y the amount of mass in their coffers in terms of generator per second is higher by over 100. So they have overtaken the mass game here in both the total and the generated uh, per second. So definitely going to watch out for sm some more experimentals here. Spamming out some... Uh, spy planes here from Navarrois are getting a good look at what is on that side of the map. They haven't got an update in a couple minutes, so they should, again, constantly throw out spy planes, constantly build Omni, constantly build all that stuff. I like the pings here, ensuring that they mark the SMDs. There are two of them, of course. Did they spot the other one? Well, the other one's on there. You know, they know where it is, so... It's good to mark them with text, but obviously with the mods that I have on, it makes it a lot easier to see them. But over to the west here, we have a push out here from Superintendent, the first major aggression here in the game at 26 minutes. It's kind of been a little slow. The Stone Brain is f starting to be outnumbered. He's going to try to make it in the water, but I don't know if he's going to make it. He's already in the yellow. Harbs are surrounding him. He has no assistance. He has one Salem trying to chase down these Harbs. And they're not going to get him, unfortunately. He does make it underneath the surface of the water. Now this uh, destroyer is going to fall, sadly. He walked it all the way from over there, probably. And a huge amount of combat coming here from Fulgum as well. Team 2 is just failing here in the middle of the map. PD trying to be spammed up. Not really effective against this large of an army and this T3 smaller army. That's, you know, more tech means, you know, more hit points and shields on... Uh, bots and whatnot so you know definitely the army to look out for this one could be m dealt with a decent amount with some gunships but there's a lot of flak in here a lot of anti-air team one definitely knows what they're doing there's even some redeemers in the mix here for mobile anti-air we have some harps here as well and man it just kicked off like it's like somebody kicked the hornet's nest and everything is go 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 chicken makes its presence known here in the middle of the map starting to take out mixes Starting to force back that mine of Team 2 once more. And this is going to be huge. Team 2 was winning in the mass game. Now they are losing. Team 1 has caught up and has overtaken them. And, of course, the loss of more mechs is on the front line for Team 2 means that number will fall even further. We have a response here, but we have a nuke launcher out here from Navarwasser and a Colossus that has been built. That needs to get to the front line here fairly quickly, as well as another one that's almost built for Bajoran. So we're going to have two Colossi going to take out this chicken here. Harbs are trying to delay it as much as they can. There's hardly any other infrastructure. It's pretty much the main you know, base section of Team 2 and whatever was on the front line. Very similar here on the northern side, of course, but it's a little more spread out. Team 2 kind of starting to conglomerate here on this western side. There is, of course, a secondary base with some mexes here to the south for Bajoran. That chicken is going to sit there and take out mexes, take out defenses, take out everything. Even take out east or not east storage, or mass storage that, you know, it's just trying to exist and store some mass. Over here to the east, we have a bunch of forces on this island. They can't, their island, plant, so they can't really go anywhere. They need a transport to get back down to the main level. The first Colossus is moving in. Bjorn now has control over both of the Colossi. Navarrizer gifting it over to him, the easy, the micro 
These units shouldn't be pushing forward. They should be waiting for the Colossus to help assist. We can see those units out here from Vulcan moving into the west. Probably going to be assisting these forces out here from Superintendent. Willow West has control of one thing, and we have Fulgrim control of another thing, and Willow West control of another thing. The only doubt, it's easier to manage in terms of that large of an army. The downside is, is you have to split your focus between your main base, echoing all that stuff, and the front line. While we have Bjorn, he's focusing in the main defense forces here, and we have where Stonebrain pumping out some T1 PD. That's not really going to matter a whole lot. He is building T3 as we speak, kind of you know, on the back foot there. He shouldn't already have T3, but he has gone T3 air, so that will assist in the air game. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. If he went for T3 air, probably should have gone T3 land by now, but he has T3 air, so he can build gunships, whalers, and all that stuff. So that's definitely going to, you know, it's, again, like a double-edged sword. you got to pick and choose what you can. And that force out here from Team 1 has fallen back. They decide they don't want to engage... Those Colossi, oh, that's the wrong team. Yeah, they can see them on the map, so they're trying to fall back. Showing that they get caught napping, especially because they only have one chicken right now. I know they have another one. Yep, the other one is on its way. But unfortunately, two chickens will not counter two Colossi unless they get some very good licks in first. Where they have a lot of assisting forces, one of the two. Another Colossi has been built for Bajorn. So kill spam with GC says Nabwester. Yep, just run them over pretty much. Are starting to patrol the area. Would like to see them being used for their reclaim efforts. Take out those NGs, making sure that the enemy team does not get any more mass. We have now. I have T3 for Pajor, not Pajor, for Stone Brain. He's going to pump out bricks. That's it. That's it. That's all he's going to build is bricks. And honestly, I do not blame him. He should be building bricks all day, every day. Is you know the brick wall is a you know phrase for a reason because they are sturdy and strong. Colossi trying to get the auxiliary units here from Fulgum. How is the ocean going? Well, it's not. Nothing's happening. Doesn't really look like anybody has really died. There's like one a unit that's died over there. That's about it. Nothing has happened on this eastern side. On the western side, of course, there's no contestant. Again, uh, for Team 1, so Team 2 has control over that western side. Would like to see it go T3 and build some uh, galaxies, but eh, it's not really needed right now. Those chickens have now been given over to Superintendent to Micro more effectively. I do like that play, just like I mentioned with the Colossus. There's now three of them. I would like some assisting shields and harbs and stuff, but in terms of numbers and in terms of you know hit points, the Colossus, I definitely have it. I'm just worried about if there's enough T3 units in this mix, it could make a difference. And, of course, there are some, let's say Gunthers, but there are some Oblivion and some Miasmas built up here. So those Colossi will take some hits as they get closer. The, <laughs> the Destroyers are trying to get close, but the Miasma, it, it's just its just a lot of things to deal with. And you can see the little air, the, you know, AOE effect they leave. The uh, Salems walk into it, and they take some lingering damage. Kind of like the T3 variant of the T2 artillery, which is the emissary, does a very similar concept. I like how they how the developers translated that into the design, where it's like, well, this T2 thing does the same thing. We'll just make the T3 do it, but on a bigger scale. I do like that um, cohesion. Nuke says Willow. Well, yes, there is a nuke, and yes, it is loaded. And an emissary is online at 33 minutes, not as fast as my other video, which was actually a really good cast, by the way. Just go check it out. I think it was... Not yesterday's, but two days before. It's like, how fast is too fast? It's them uh, building a T3 already under, I think it was 27 minutes, 26 minutes. But the emissary has now been completed. A second one is now being started. I, the only thing I don't like is the nuke and the already are in the same place. I don't, I don't like it. And it's next to the T3 headquarters. I don't like how all these things are grouped together. It just makes it one giant... Uh, like your eggs are all in one basket kind of thing. You're putting all of your major defenses and offensive structures in one place, and it's an easy target to uh, hone in on for your opponent. you gotta, you got to uh, decentralize, make everything kind of spread out. And unfortunately, the Colossi are out of position on this eastern side, and this gives the opportunity for these chickens and a huge host of harms to push forward. 
you know, I am the harbinger of your death. You know, all these little harbs just kind of moving on their four legs. There's really no Air Force. I don't see any gunships. There are a couple of bricks in town. There's not really a whole lot going on here for Team uh, 2. The pings go down. The Colossi are probably given their orders. Team 1 saw the opportunity. They took the opportunity and are deciding to run with it here. Good on them for using the advantage while they have it. That's the downside with this game is, you know, sometimes you just wait and wait and wait. And eventually uh, it doesn't really matter because you, you know, lost the opportunity when you had it. And we should see the Colossus come in at some point. Yep, they are moving, but will they get here fast enough? Well, some units have retreated. A chicken has retreated. They're going to only use one for the attack. A host of Spectre 2 gunships, Spectre T2 gunships have appeared. There's not a whole lot of AA in this mix. There's actually no AA, only on the chicken, the, Yatho the Yathotha. It's the only weird name to say is the Yathotha. It, like, messes with my tongue. Like, it doesn't feel right to say it. I don't know what it is. But the lots of shields, and again, these shields are just going to die off because there's no offensive capabilities on the shields. The battery of Cerberus are just being spammed up as much as they can be. Fortunately, it's not going to be enough, and a lot of them will go down. The T3 headquarters is under threat for both the land and the air for Stonebrain. He will be, you know, not back to the Stone Age, but, you know, definitely, you know, further behind in the tech game. The chicken's about to fall. Tanks out that small little air grid that was there. I think it was just that one T3 air, though. But uh, the Iron Stone will go off. We'll take out the SMD. wasn't loaded yet, so at least, you know, that's something. And Bajoran has built another experimental. It's probably another chicken. Sorry, not another chicken. Another Colossus. Yep, and that one is on its way to deal with the rest of those harbs. So, eh. Team 1 probably could have done a lot better. They probably could have gone with both of the chickens and been perfectly fine. But, uh, and probably even gotten a calm kill, honestly. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like they were being a little too... Um, conservative with their attacks. They were kind of holding off a little bit more than they probably should have. And that uh, T3 engineer gets killed. But there is counter artillery and there's looks like there's one. Yeah, it's just one. It is not here. That is a crab that's almost done. It is in the back. I like the placement here. It's on the edge of the map. It's apart from hit the main base of Willow, so it's not going to be hit. You know, you're not going to have random shells hitting anything nearby. You have a SMD nearby, but not directly nearby. I don't like the placement near the mass fabs, though, but it's um, better than being right next to it, so good placement on that. The emissaries are targeting the main air grid here for Willow, decreasing his ability to build air units, and you could tell, you can see the shot land. Let's see, we'll see, we'll watch the next one go to land, take out a lot of hit points and then the uh, lingering effect hits again takes out even more of those factories the shields are going online everywhere um, wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of shields go on here well the air grid the secondary air grid for team two uh, air player of Nabwiser isn't even protected here and I I can say it's not it's not looking good for that and the nuke does get launched I think it was headed, there's an SMB even farther forward than I would expect, but this one is going to be loaded by now. Oh, it's not loaded. Oh, that's not good. Is this one loaded? This one is loaded, but it has it has two. Fortunately, I don't know if it will matter. They're going to go in the back line. They're going to target the max, uh, max, the SMB in the back. They could have gone after the, they could have gone after the artillery. Oh, but it goes to the main base of superintendent, and that is going to... Go up and smoke. Kaboom. No comms were killed in that explosion. Uh, but they're not going to allow any more SMD to not be loaded after that. Uh, that was your one. You weren't loaded full. Yeah, says superintendent. Yeah. Well, no, he doesn't even have. Oh, he does have one. It's right here. But yeah, none of them were loaded except for this one. Uh, that's going to hurt. And looks like. Yep, still targeting the air grid. It's like. I, I watch the artillery shows sometimes, and sometimes they feel like they're going to fall short, and then they don't. It's just kind of weird how the how the tracking in in game kind of looks, because like it looks like it's going to go further to the west, but it doesn't. It's just it's just kind of weird. Well, now we have a push of four colossi. They're not grouped together, unfortunately. That's going to be a misplay. Should have had them walk simultaneously, and that's going to cause them to fall behind. And now the crab has carte blanche to just deal as much damage as he can into the backs of those colossus. Definitely should have waited to group up a little bit more and walk in tandem with one another. 
in our walk in formation. But that drops the eco of Superintendent down to 83, and the eco of Team 1 is falling rapidly. It's at 900 versus the 1,200 that Team 2 has. But the shields around that nuke have fallen. Ooh, that's going to hurt. And another nuke gets launched, so they're able to get another nuke out before it gets destroyed. Yeah, it lands and gets taken out. No, it doesn't have the lingering effect. So one more shell will do it. Misses it by that much. The you know the T3 air that'd be a perfect uh, shield if it gets online. Impacts the nearby shield for the emissary though. Another shell lands. This one's gonna miss. The uh, the nuke launcher does the shield get built in time? Ooh no! Does that nuke land? It goes after the main base of Fulgum and that will be taken out as well. Why they're not going after the artillery, I have no idea, since there's now two of them that are built. Kind of a misplay on that. But the shield does go around both the factory and the launcher, so those are both protected now, at least for now, of course. But I just... No, no, I know they're taking out the main ecos of two players. It's just... I, I don't know. I feel like it's a misplay to not go after the artillery at least once, especially after you learn that you could get here. And you could probably edge out that uh, SMD. It's now loaded, but so it's Willow Wish that's built it. But you can tell, uh, yeah, I think the first nuke could have gotten it, and then they could have gone for a base kill. But these Colossi are trying to defend here in the middle. There's now another one, but Team 2 not really going good in the land game here. They had an advantage, and they didn't use it while they had the chance, and that is going to land them in a world of hurt. Three Colossus fall, and none of the experimentals for Team 1 do. My Artie is gone, says Nabrowasher. Yep, it is gone. Hashtag Artie is, <laughs> Artie is down to his, uh, Willow says in chat. And unfortunately, this is just going to be a push. Nuke is dead. Yeah, and again, that's what happens when you put all of your structures, all of your important ones in the same location. It's not the best idea, and you can see why. And so we have a crab in tow, but against a couple chickens, a... Colossus and another crab. It's not going to amount to a whole lot. We have another Colossus in tow as well. So, I mean, Team 2 can come back from this. They have a host of gunships ready to deploy. Not a lot of air being used in this game, I've noticed. Just kind of just some air, but not a whole lot of air. Or not as aggressive as it really could be. Can that naval fleet to the east? Not really, literally not doing anything. We have some Othams in the back that... You know, are trying to protect, I guess, the coast on this eastern side. Let's see, can they reach? Well, they can reach not, they can't really reach anything. This one can reach a little bit, but we have the crab on the cliff saying, this is my cliff, go away. Outflanked, says that crab. Says, you can't hit me, but I can. The, the chicken is going to fall here shortly. The Colossus, that should be the primary target. Another experimental build, it is another crab. You know, Team 2 can still come back from this. They're building a rapid-fire artillery installation here. They should get more shield coverage, even more shield coverage. The Omens do open up, though. The units out here from Team 1 have drifted onto that eastern side. There's hardly any anti-air in this mix, just the ones off of the experimentals. So not really going to go good. And that Iron Storm is going to go off and deal lots of damage to nearby units, thereby making it a little more effective. The ASF coming to take out the gunships. The ASF's now for Nabawester engage with Will-O-Wisps, but I think will o Wisp has the advantage. He has 117 as I click on it versus the 92. So, yep, looks like Nabawester might lose that. Colossus has reached the main base, is now targeting the other Colossus. So it's two crabs and a Colossus versus a chicken and a crab and a Colossus, which will fall here fairly shortly, and another Colossus, so 2-2. Two, two. Oh, it takes out a shield, but I uh, sorry, shield and a PD. First crab falls, and the chicken falls. The bricks are going to get away from that here fairly quickly. But this other Colossus should push forward. So that push that Team 1 had, they had the advantage on the ground, but Team 2 was able to pump out enough experimentals to hold off that push. I don't know if Team 2 will be lucky that again. Why are you turning around? What What are you doing? I don't, I don't know what you're doing about that. <laughs> the brick. Takes out two <laughs> ASF by himself in the hands of that Colossus. And the crab the crab is dead. You must have tried to kill one of the experimentals at this point. You're not going to get it away. Yeah, it might get the kill. I don't know. It's trying to get out of range, I think. 
Oh, oh, and it doesn't die. Does the AOE splash kill? No, it does not. That's going to be a huge mass dump here. How much mass is on the field as of right now? 177 on screen. Make it a little smaller. 130 on Team 2 side of things, so lots of mass to scoop up. That rapid fire has now been kind of, not halted, but severely reduced in production. And now Team 1 is protected in the you know SMD game. They have one loaded here. They have one loaded here, and now there's two artillery. They're building a third one, and they're building another chicken back here. They have a, th and they do have another hub of them. So that is number three. Number four is being built currently. So Willow is handling the RD game here in the north, and the other two players just handling land defense. I like the splitting up of uh, duties there. Unfortunately, I don't know. This needs to be. There needs to be more resources. Team two has the mass advantage. At least they should. Nope, they don't. Team one does. It switched. It looks like Willow Bell will be pumped out a lot. Well, we have six hundred. Oh, it was five hundred. What's going on with his mass? Oh, is he ma he's energy stalling? Oh, he's going back and forth. So maybe that's what's going on. If you e stall, you reduce the amount of mass you generate per second until you can fix it. So, but it might be team two just pushes forward with our, uh, with our no, artillery with uh, experimentals. There's hardly anything in defense. There's one chicken. Let's see what else? Uh, there's another chicken on its way, and Colossus are being built as we speak. But there's not really a whole lot on the ground now. No man's land in the middle of the map. You need the eco. Team 2 needs to just reclaim everything. Just target the main, you know, batches of uh, mass here from the crab and from the chickens, and just that's it. Just that's what you use. You funnel it into uh, aircraft. You funnel it into you know the maybe the rapid fire, or just pump out even more experimentals at this point. This navy is not doing you any favors at this point, so you might as well use it. And they are currently. The East Coast will get taken over by Team 2. Is it too late, though? I, mean, I don't think so. Team 1's player of Fulcum is building a galaxy as we speak. I don't know if that's really going to be enough, though. But at least it'll be something to hold off those omens for now. Fire this with Salva. Oh, well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, that would be the main target, since especially because there'll be a fourth one right here. And he's building another chicken. So he did divert. He did decentralize his main artillery. So he has an artillery battery here and a secondary one over here. Will build an awe washer here pretty soon. But yeah, look, that air grid out here from Team Two is now gone. But that rapid fire artillery station was online. It took damage from, um, I guess, some um, incoming fire from artillery. And that will make this game turn over to Team Two if they can keep it online. The artillery is pretty strong right now they need to hold as best they can shields just while you have shield while you have engineers repping the shields rep up the rest of the shields uh, rep up the rest of the shields and then build even more shields if that rapid fire stays on for long enough these already will fall the shields again these seraphim are strong looks like will is going to start micro them a lot more you can see them turn off and turn back on Trying to micro them as best he can. And shield micro is very hard to do. And he's building shields all the time. I thought I heard some explosions. And the shields around Bajorn are starting to fall. He has taken a hit. He needs to move. And you can see those shields are just not strong enough to hold off four incoming artillery shells. And they're coming in all the time. The restorer is being uh, used to take out these destroyers and battleships here. And you can just see the shields are starting to collapse, but it's it's still there. You have shields popping on and off all the time. More shields being built in the back. And I don't think it's going to matter. Will it be enough? I don't know. Let's get a nice screenshot of that. Incoming fire at all times. Rapid fire artillery station must f keep firing. <laughs> must keep firing. <laughs> It is rapid fire for a reason. You can see how fast it reloads and then fires once more. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. It'll be close, though. If Team 1 loses the arty, it's game. And if Team 2 loses the arty, it's mostly game. The Cybern is building a teleporter. does have the laser, so they do have one last-ditch effort. And the shields around that rapid fire go down. Shields popping back off on on all the time. How's the shield work? Well, they're not getting through Will-O-Wisp Micro. It was able to damage it a little bit, but not enough. It might have been better to just go after this one first, probably. 
but most of them obviously are housed there, so that is the main target. They, they, just, they just, just got to move. Just push. That's it. That's You're only going to win by pushing the land at this point. You've pretty much lost artillery, and I heard some strat bombers go off somewhere. Oh, going off, taking off the uh, hit points on the omens. They're trying to get as close as they can, but they're just slightly out of range. You can see just barely. They are starting to do some damage to the shields, but it's not enough. There's enough build pad here. There's enough micro here, and it's just going to go Team 1's way unless Bajoran can just keep building shields. And we have two teammates building shields. We have Bajoran and Neverwise are just trying to pump out shields as fast as they can. But look at the Artie just raining down from the sky. I wouldn't be surprised to see these strap arms being used just to obliterate that uh, emplacement. But now the land has now engaged. I feel like this is kind of a m wrong placement of these, uh, you know, pretty much essentially artillery uh, engineer, not engineers, experimentals. We have the Megalus in front with the Colossus in back. Should be the other way around because the Megalus have longer range. We have four chickens. Oh, you know, oh, is it still down? Nope. Storm gets is Storm gets killed by Willow. There were nearby strap bombers and just a lot of shields, and none of the Artie goes down. One, two, three. None of it goes down. That is a kill. The first kill of the game, and it's now a three v two in favor of Team One. It's literally just the salvation left, <laughs> and some shields and a pigeon. Just ki just kill the pigeon. It, it's it's not it's not worth it. If it blows up, there goes your, you know, there goes your NGs and all that. And they're still holding out. They're not giving up. The ASF are gonna cover for that. But it does look like the comma Bjorn does get taken out by Willowis. The Awasher does come in, and will finish off that salvation, and that will be game here for Team One. Unless uh, Navarweiser pulls something out of a hat, it's not really going to matter. The Team 1 knows where the comm is. They just flew over him a second ago. And to you guys held in there. Yeah, well played. The carry was epic. GG says Navarweiser. And it might just be an exit. He might just accept death by the Awasher, though. But he does gain out before that bomb lands. And it will be a win here for Team 1. Again, it was a little bit slow in the beginning, but it picked up fairly quickly. Sometimes that happens, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, combat and just fighting all the time. And it's kind of like steady. And then sometimes there's games where it's kind of low, it's kind of slow, you know, kind of just build up. And then it just goes whoop. And it just goes and it just doesn't stop. Then, you know, the nitro gets hit and it just you know, cooks. Um, and again, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And again, Bjorn, not Bjorn. Yeah, Bjorn tried to teleport in. Not Bjorn, sorry. Stone brain tried to teleport in, and you can just tell. See, the layered shields allowed a lot of that, the, a lot of the maser to be just null and void, and then the strap bombers came in and killed them off. There wasn't even any PD here, it was just the strap bombers. But uh, again, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. That was a very good game. I'd say, again, a little bit boring in the beginning, but after that, it really, really kicked off. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. My little rant, my little rant, my little. Um, ramblings and please like and comment down below if you enjoyed the cast and please if you haven't subscribed i greatly appreciate that little red click it turns it from i think red to like a gray color if i can remember correctly and i can't picture it off the top of my head but again thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it and i will see every one of you including you and you of course in the next one